Hey guys, Caleb here. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're talking about my favorite gear from 2021, all of the things that I purchased to help me make better videos. So let's dive in with our first category, which is cameras. While I almost picked up a DJI Ronin 4D because I love that camera, I ended up sticking with the same setup as last year, Panasonic S1 for this main shot with a Canon 24-70L lens. And then for B-roll, I've been using nothing but the A7S III, which I really liked when I got it last year, but now I really, really like because I finally figured out color and a LUT workflow with this camera. And if you wanna pick up the same LUT that I made for myself, you can find that information in the description. 10 bucks gets you a full video series on how to use it. And that changed this camera for me. And because of it, this is the first Sony mirrorless camera that I'm absolutely thrilled with when it comes to color. In lens land, a couple things changed this year. I pretty much exclusively have been using this Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter F2.8. It lives on this camera and pretty much all B-roll you see with the exception to another lens we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, which is done with this. And I really love the range. The size is really lightweight, and it's a great price if you're looking for an all-around good lens for Sony E-mount cameras. Another lens I did a review on earlier in the year is the Sure Full Frame 50mm T29 1.6x anamorphic lens. My personal copy finally came, so I backed it on Indiegogo and I just love this lens. I'm so excited about this new full frame line. So I got the E-mount version to go with the A7S III. And if you wanna learn more about this lens, you can check out my review. Next up, we have lighting and there's three lights all from the same company and I didn't plan this, but these are the best lights that I've played with this year. Number one is a light I just reviewed. It's kind of the new budget king and for me at least, and that's the Amaran 60D. I'm using the 60X right now to create that mirror effect in the background. I'll go ahead and turn off those lights. There they are completely off and you'll see right around this lamp area, I'll turn it back on and we have that nice uh, kind of fake window look and that's the 60X firing into a mirror and I've done a video on mirrors, super great. And uh, so yeah, really like this light, super simple, super compact. Check out my review if you're interested. And then a similar light is going to be the Amaran 100D. And I've been using this also in the background. I've got another one creating this window effect, shooting through a Leco uh, lens filter, if you will. And uh, another solid light, strong mount. So two amazing budget options if you're looking for something with great color specs, output, and on a budget. And lastly, we have the new RGB King, in my opinion, the Aperture P60C. I'll fire this one up here. There's 100%, I'll point it at the background. I did a review on this guy as well, and it is incredible. Its output is wildly good. So if you're looking for a super bright RGB light, this thing is great and it swings pretty hard even against the Aperture Nova 300C. Because I love this light so much, I actually bought several of them. So there's another one lighting the background, kind of bringing up the ambient of this set. And it's currently only at 10%. Let me turn it off real quick. That's what it looks like when it's turned off. And I'll put the distance from the light to the background on screen here. Now for kicks and giggles, let's put it at 100%. So as you can see, this thing is plenty bright for so many different scenarios. So recently I picked up a massive 72 by 48 inch softbox. You can buy it with a Bones mount. It also has a grid available. It essentially gives you a six foot by four foot soft light source when used with one of these lights that we talked about earlier or something like an Aperture 300D. And I've just been really happy with them. So I'll include that as well as everything else we're talking about down in the description. Now let's jump into some audio gear. For my live streams, I have switched completely to the AT2020 from Audio-Technica. This is a fantastic microphone. It's a hundred bucks and it's better built than a lot of my more expensive microphones. So it's completely metal. I love the mount that it's on and I like to have it just like this kind of facing up and toward me so you can fully see my face. I'm not doing something like this on stream. So if you wanna hear what this sounds like, check out my streams, which I try to do every single Wednesday and uh, just a really strong, good, solid XLR microphone. Another microphone I really liked this year was the Deity D4 Mini. I did a review on this guy and for around $50, I don't know if you're gonna be able to beat this when it comes to functionality and sound quality. It's fantastic, it's small, lightweight. You can boom it over yourself or you can use it on top of your camera. It's just a great little all-arounder with an extra input so you can mix devices going into your camera, which is fantastic. One of my bigger purchases this year was the Sennheiser MKH416. I'm using it right now. It's not cheap at around $1,000, 
but holy smokes, this thing has been fantastic. And now when I use any other microphone, it makes me sad because this guy is just incredible. So if you just wanna be done and buy the best shotgun microphone, in my opinion, this is a good one to go with. If you wanna hear it up against a ton of microphones, check out my massive microphone comparison video where you'll also find several budget options. Next up, we have these tiny V-mount batteries from Came TV. I've bought several of these this year and I've really enjoyed using them. So they're much smaller. They're perfect for camera rigs, like the custom one I built for my A7S III. And they're also great with lights. So I've been using them with stuff like this 60D from Amaran, and they're just great. They last a long time. They've got several outputs all around the sides of the battery. There's a little button to check your levels on the battery. It's just a great solid little guy to go with. A V-mount accessory I've been using with these batteries is this Nitsi mini V-mount plate. This thing is incredible. I love it for small rigs, and it works great with these mini batteries from Kame TV. So you can mount this thing to the back of your camera rig, onto a clamp on a stand, it has four outputs, puts tons of mounting points and as you can see here it's just minuscule with these tiny batteries so if you're looking for small power options that aren't going to weigh down or bulk up your rig these two items are fantastic. Next, let's talk monitors. The biggest monitor purchase I made this year was the Sumo from Atomus, which you can see right back here in the background. I've been using that for my B-roll set to have a nice large display with multiple assist features. I've talked about it a lot in my B-roll giant video cart dolly thing, which you can check out in the description as well. It's not cheap at $2,000, but it's been invaluable and I have it on a rolling stand so I can move it around. Also, make sure you subscribe because I have that massive Massive monitor comparison video where I'm going to talk about 12 to 14 monitors in January. So that's going to be one of the first videos of the year. You don't want to miss it. Next, let's talk software. There are three pieces of software that I've been using constantly here in 2021. The first one has been Notion. I have completely switched from using Evernote to using Notion for all business organizations. So when it comes to keeping track of all our video projects, we have a massive Notion set up for that. Really a big fan of that software and it's free. The next piece of software I've been using a ton for my live streams is Ecamm Live. It is a great option if you're in the Apple ecosystem. You can automate your entire show if needed and you can do things like have little comments easily pop up and so, so much more. So if you're interested in that, you can check out the link in the description. And then finally, a really simple app called Magnet, which allows you to quickly drag and snap windows around your screen. If you're like me and you deal with a lot of files and windows on your computer, this is a lifesaver. I know there's options built into Mac OS for this, but nothing has been as fast, snappy, and useful as this software. So it's a really cheap app that you can pick up that'll completely change your life if you're on on a Apple computer. So that does it for my list. I wanna take a second to thank you guys so much for all of the support this year. Those who have purchased guides and LUTs, thank you so much. And I'm really looking forward to hanging out with you guys in 2022. So for the last time this year, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we will see you in the next video.